so welcome we will be discussing question five and uh, question five is on uh, this is negotiable instrument discuss any five of the parties to are negotiable instruments so you need to know to just state the parties and then you explain uh, uh, who they are and then uh, define the following terms unilateral mistake misrepresentation quantum merit breach of contract and frustration of contract all of these have been gotten from uh, the law of contract so let's uh, try to tackle them discuss any five of the parties to a negotiable instrument so the first party to a negotiable instrument will have the maker or the drawer the drawer and this is the person who does the person or the party who does the who does the promissory note who does the promissory note or the check the person who basically writes or kind of, you know the one who draws the one who writes the one who uh, intends to make payment to another uh, party so is the one who will basically write a check and issue it to the other party for payment so the one who makes the one who does the promise or not or the check or uh, the, 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 the you know that bill of exchange that is the maker or the drawer and then the party uh, the party who will now re effect that uh, promise or not or the check or the uh, bill of exchange the one who will effect the one who will make it uh, basically money is called the drawee the drawee so the drawer is the one who does the, the 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 promise or not the one who writes the check and then the drawee is the one who pays the check the one who pays the check he actually actualizes that uh, the, the 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 whole uh, transaction so in our case for example we are talking about party a is to pay party b some money so a will be the drawer the one who intends to pay the other party so a is the one who is supposed to pay b a becomes the drawer b will become the payee and then of course uh, we have the bank here the bank which will which will uh, actualize that this transaction turn the check or the promise or money into uh, you know turn the check into money so the bank will become the drawee so who is the drawee the person or the party directed to pay the money by the drawer so this is the person or the party directed to pay the money to pay the money by the drawer so the drawer writes the check the drawee in our case most likely will be the bank who is now supposed to receive that check and convert it or uh, you know transform it into money so the drawee is the bank the one who's supposed to pay the drawer is the one who does or who writes the check and then we say the one who is being paid is the payee so payee is this party whose name whose name is written in the uh, either promise or not either the promise or not or the check the party whose name is written in the promise or not of the check the one who is supposed to be paid the one who is supposed to be paid the one who is going to receive the cash and then we have the holder the holder the holder is supposedly sup uh, supposedly assumed to be the payee unless if the payee uh, the holder is supposedly assumed to be the pay the holder is this person who has the this instrument with him that is the holder so the holder it's supposed to be the payee or the person to whom he may have endorsed the payee or the person the person to whom he may have he may have endorsed the person uh, to whom him the payee may have endorsed either the check 
or uh, the promissory note. So the holder is supposed to be the payee or the person to whom he may have endorsed. Now, if he endorses, if uh, this uh, holder endorses, so if the holder endorses, if the holder endorses uh, or transfers his right to another party, if the holder endorses or transfers his right to another party, then he becomes the endorser. This is a holder who endorses, signs, or transfers his right to another party, to another party. Then he becomes the endorser. And the other party who has been uh, transferred the rights to will now be referred to as the endorsee. The other party who has been transferred the rights to by either the payee or uh, the, 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 the endorser will be referred to as the endorsee. That this is the other party who has been transferred the rights to the rights to by either the endorser or payee. It will be called the endorsee. So endorser is the holder who endorses or who transfers his right to another party so that that other party will be the one who will be paid. A holder, payee, or the person to whom he may have endorsed. A holder is the payee or the person to whom this payee may have endorsed. And when the payee endorses another person, then he becomes, you know, that other person becomes the holder in can either be the just a holder or the holder in due course so these are how many parties are these these are six parties the maker or the drawer the drawee the payee and then the holder the one who is um, basically from the word holding the check then the endorser and uh, we have the endorsee the endorser can be the holder or the payee and then the endorsee is that other party who will now be able to receive the money having been endorsed or uh, the rights of the, the payee having been channeled to him. So these are six, but the question wants how many? Five. So you can just work with this uh, six and of course there are so many others which you can always add. Now let's look at the part B of the question. Uh, define the following terms. We have unilateral mistake then we have uh, what misrepresentation, quantum merit, breach of contract, and frustration of contract. Now, unilateral mistake. This is a mistake. Mistake. A mistake is just an error. Error done by by one person. And in most cases, it's about misunderstanding. Error done by one person, especially in terms of uh, you know understanding where he understands something completely different from what the other party meant. We say that that is a unilateral mistake. There are so many other mistakes. We have the mutual mistakes, but unilateral specifically simply means from the word uni that it's only one party who has uh, basically uh, understood or uh, uh, has a different meaning altogether from what is the true position. So he basically misunderstood or uh, uh, or uh, received the instruction erroneously as uh, opposed to what was actually being communicated to him. We say that that is a unilateral mistake. So when he realizes that uh, the mistake was uh, on his part, his or her part, he might choose to either rescind the contract or reform the contract so we might end up with either contract reformation or, or contract rescission the moment he realizes that uh, there was an error and the error was on uh, his side so in lateral mistake this is an error in conceptualization where one person understands something completely different 
from what the other person meant. Then we have misrepresentation. Misrepresentation is, uh, how do we say, this is a, uh, uh, when you talk about misrepresentation, is basically a deviation from the facts, deviation from the facts. This is where somebody alters the facts, alters the facts to suit his or her situation or the need at that particular uh, point in time. So these are false uh, statements. We can say false statements to gain some undue advantage uh, of the situation or of the other party who is entering into that uh, contract. And basically false statements that are meant to influence the other party's decision. We talk of misrepresentation. Deviation from the facts as they are or altering the facts or false statements from the truth to help win the influence of uh, or the, the, the to help the to, to, to basically make the other party make decisions that are in favor or in your favor so you misrepresent the facts you alter the facts or you deviate from the facts with the for the sake of, of influencing the decision making of the other party to be in your favor Quantum merit means as much as uh, is earned, as much as is earned. And this is one of the remedies that is uh, awarded by the, by the courts, especially for breach of contract, breach of contract. So when there is a breach of contract, uh, the, co the court might choose to award quantum merit as much as is earned. And this is where the court assesses and then uh, gives you or uh, awards uh, the, 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 the desiring party or the, 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 the right party what is actually due to him to the extent of the, the, the either the, 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 the what he has already performed or what he has delivered so it's a, basically it's a matter of assessing what has been performed or what has been delivered and then we are given to that extent we call that quantum merit as much as is and maybe if we might have if we might just add something here that it's a claim for a reasonable sum in respect of goods or services that uh, have been supplied to the the, the 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 basically to the other party so you are trying to it's a claim for reasonable sum in respect of goods or services reasonable sum and basically it's the court that assesses this reasonable uh, some, especially when there is a breach of contract. It's actually one of the remedies alongside uh, specific performance, alongside um, the, 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 the damages, alongside injunction. All these are remedies to a uh, breach of contract. Quantum merit is one of the remedies and it means as much as it's and where the court assesses uh, uh, the extent of which uh, to which you have performed and then it orders the other party to make a claim uh, to, to, to basically compensate you to that extent. Then we have a breach of contract. Breach of contract. Now, we've already mentioned a breach of contract. Breach of contract is a violation. A violation of the agreed terms and terms and conditions in a in an otherwise in an otherwise valid contract so a violation of the agreed terms and condition in an otherwise valid contract that is a breach of contract so we, we entered into a contract a contract that was valid in all senses and then if you violate the terms and conditions of that contract then you'll be breaching that contract that is where you fail to meet the expectations of that contract by simply going out of uh, the, 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 the terms and conditions, by not adhering to the terms and conditions of the contract. We say that you have breached that contract. Then frustration of contract. This is where uh, something happens that makes, uh, uh, you can talk of a happening, a happening or the occurrence of an event, the occurrence of an event that uh, that uh, 
basically affects affects the 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 the, the, the Just create some space here for the write up. So, uh, this uh, is uh, an occurrence of an event that makes it impossible, makes it impossible, makes it impossible for the agreed upon contract to take place. The occurrence of an event that makes it impossible for the agreed upon contract to take place. So it's something that uh, normally should be beyond your, should be beyond the parties, beyond the parties' control, the parties' control. So something happens that is beyond the parties who have entered into a contract's control, uh, and uh, it goes right to the depth of the contract and destroys the basis or the object upon which the contract was formed. So if it destroys or it interferes with the object uh, uh, upon which the contract was formed, then it means the whole contract lacks meaning because, I mean, if the platform that was the, the, the basis for the contract has been interfered with or uh, is no longer uh, the, 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 the or will not happen anymore, or is not there, then there's nothing we can do about that contract. So we say that the contract has been frustrated. It cannot uh, proceed because the basics of that contract are no more. There's an occurrence or a happening that has interfered with the basics uh, of the contract, and so the contract cannot go ahead because uh, it's... Uh, uh, the, 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 the roots have basically been interfered with to a greater extent. So these are contracts that have been rendered impossible due to a supervening event uh, which is not caused by any of the uh, facts. So for example, uh, we are talking about an, uh, transportation of goods by rail from Mombasa to Nairobi. That's the, what the contract says. And then something happens uh, that affects the rail system so that you cannot transport again by rail because there is no rail system again uh, in place. So in such like cases, it means you will have that contract is frustrated. You need to come up with another contract because the rail is no longer there. So, thank you. Let's meet in the next uh, question. What we are supposed to do is basically to explain all this. Like, um, just uh, by, as a, by the way, like in misrepresentation, when you talk about misrepresentation, we say these are the, the, the deviation from the facts or false statements that are used to, uh, especially to influence the, 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 the decision making. A, of the other party so that you can uh, know, make decisions that are favorable to what you want. And we have different types of uh, misrepresentations. You might want to go all the way to uh, just mentioning them because too much is not worth it for you to start explaining all these different types of uh, misrepresentation. But we have the negligent misrepresentation. Uh, that is, uh, we have the negligent, we have the fraudulent misrepresentation and we have the innocent misrepresentation. So there's one that you might be misrepresenting without necessarily without the intention. There's one with the you are misrepresenting with the intention to fraud. There's uh, the other one you are misrepresenting without really caring what the effects are. So those are uh, the types of misrepresentation. You might want just to mention them but you need not to go a uh, long way into uh, explaining them because two marks is not worth explaining all those. So, I hope you are uh, comfortable with all this. Let's move and meet in the next question, question six. Thank you.